All right, good evening. Let's learn a shtickle Kedushas Levi. It's Lel Shishi, Mishmar night. That's what it always was in Yeshiva. We, and even, I didn't learn in Chesidish Yeshivas. We could learn whatever we want. So Thursday night, we, us, we usually learn the Chesidish Yisvarim. That's, that's how we, that's up what we did. You know, me and my friends, who, who all learned in Ezra Academy together, and then we went to, to Eretz Surel together. We, we learned by Ramosha Weinberger in, in Ezra Academy. So we, uh, we 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 would learn the Hasidic Sforim Lel Shishi. So uh, especially Kedusha Slavi, that's a safer that I think is Shavuot Chol Nefesh, and it's also I I would say it's a big school to learn from the Sanagorian Shli Yisrael, Rabbeinu Levi Yitzchak with Sora Sasha Mevritich of Schusi the Leinu Al Chol Yisrael Amen. My mishpacha had a, a shaykhis with him. My my ancestor, my Haile Gazayde, the Kruler Rav, the, the, the Berdichever actually went to Kruler to go visit my Zayde, Kruler Rav. That was that was the godless of my Zayde, that the that, that the Berdichever went to go visit him. Can you imagine such a thing? And, he, and what he found there was uh, a son, with, uh, my, uh, I guess a, a great 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 uncle of mine. Became a, a chosid of the Bardichever, became a rebbe in his own right in Changer. Before before the Jungreis family came to Changer, our family we were rabbonim in Changer, and the, the, the Fetter is given a rebbe, and Zayd is given a roof. Zoy is given the, the Fetter is given Sai roof and Sai rebbe. That's that's the truth. Anyway, Mishdacha Visem Mirochik. Right. So in, in, in the end of Parshas Mishpatim, we have a very esoteric passage from Exodus chapter 24, where they had the theophany, with the, the Moses and the, and the 70, 70 elders and all those that were with him, witnessed uh, something that by all means of how we understand things in Orthodox Judaism today, cannot possibly be taken literally to the point where I remember Rabbi Moshe Weinberger said that it's heretical to take these verses literally because they're so esoteric and anthropomorphic <coughs> seeing the sapphire stones under the feet of God obviously those of us who who hold on to our traditions understand that this is metaphorical. It's the word of God, but it, it's but God wants us to understand it not literally but metaphorically. And, and there are certain things that are literal and certain things are metaphorical. That's just how it is. And that's Pshat, like my Zayd and the Chavis Yor explained, that when it says, Ein mikra that when the sages teach that scripture does not deviate from the simple meaning there are certain times when the simple meaning is not, pshat does not mean a, a literal translation. Pshat means pshat, like we like we say in in Yeshiva Shesprach, you say, oh, did you get pshat in the Gemara? Right? Not, uh, they don't ask, did you get, you know, Remus Drush and Sod in the Gemara? Right? Did you get pshat? And the pshat in the Gemara is lav davka, it's not necessarily the literal translation of what the words of the Talmud say. But rather, did you get pshat? And so, so the Heilig Gezayda, the Chavos Yor explains, that pshat means, meaning when, you know, the example like, when it says, uh, and the Chazal say, means pesach. the pshat is mimachras pesach. And so when you say, the pshat doesn't mean the literal translation. Literal is not pshat. Pshat is pshat. It's the simple meaning, not the literal meaning. There's a difference between the simple meaning and the literal meaning. A simple meaning may not necessarily be literal. And this is another example of that. Mishtach Avisa Beirocha, you can set And that they saw the, you know, the Livnus Asapir, Tachas Raglov. Right. So anyway, but let's look at this, this, these two words that 
the high of the of Rav Schussi Elayne Bosa Amen brings Yishtachavisa Meirochik and they prostrated themselves in worship from far away. What does that mean? Far away from what? From what, what, what exactly? Obviously this is uh, talking about some kind of a prophetic vision and it's obviously very difficult to understand to get the Peshat but it's not impossible just because it's difficult doesn't mean it's impossible but here we're, we're going to learn a Hasidic term it's Lav Dav Kapshat and, and a lot of and, and something like this such an esoteric passage you really need the Hasidic approach to really have really any understanding and a lot of times the Kedusha Slavi, he'll bring a pshat that would appear to be the pshat. So let's just see. I don't remember this term. I've learned it before years ago. I don't remember. I'm just I'm just trying to fill the time during my commute. So let's let's get to this. Yesh loimar. There is what to say. This is something, especially when you learn the Chabad's forum. They speak of eminence and um, near and near and far. Eminence and uh, ex. I'm trying to remember what the English word they had. A good English word they always would use, like Rabbi Shochet, Zechariah, other rabbis from Chabad. Eminence and ex. Boy, my English is not so good anymore. I'm always giving. I got the 1600 of the SATs, but that was 20 years ago. You know, <laughs> I mean, you know, I got perfect. Not 1600, but I got 800 on the English part, and I got, I think, 1260 Sachako. I think I was 1280, something like that. Meaning, I uh, no more than that. 13. Well, what am I saying? 15. I got 800. I can't even do math anymore. I got 800 on the English, on the language, and the math, I got 680. So that's, that's 1480. That's pretty good, right? But I can't, <laughs> it's a, it's a familiar. Eminence is close, and the far away means, not really shot far away, but like how um, it's X something. Oy vey. English is as we have fared. What happened to me? It must be I'm tired. It must be because I hit the cow two weeks ago, and that's what jo uh, you know messed up my, addled my brain. I, I'm very embarrassed, but I'm still gonna post this anyway. Alpha Piche, just to humble myself, to show how I don't know English. You know, like the story by the Rabbi Koilo, You know. The Rabbi Koyle, Haile Rabbi Koyle. If you're ever over there by, by the Interboro, you can go to the Rabbi Koyle, right? And by the Rabbi Koyle, by the Chief Rabbi, Rabbi Yaakov Yosef, right? He said, uh, you know, he was a great orator, right? A brilliant orator. And near his death, he lost his mind a little bit. He lost his memory. And he got up to give a speech, and he said, "State and Rambam, State and Rambam," and he couldn't remember the Rambam. And he said, "Look at what my devotion to Kali Yisrael did." And here I am, dedicated to trying to bring Yiddish Kaid Al Taras fighting like the Rav Koyl did. For Kashrus, for Yiddishkeit, when it was a real uphill battle, and and like George Washington Lahavdil, when he had to put on his spectacles, and he said, "I, I've, I've, I've grown old in age in service to my country." Right, the story with George Washington that he had to put on his glasses to read, to read something. So this is even more than that. That the Rav Koylo, the God of Lador, Eid, who, who knew all Shas and Poiskim, he knew every Rambam, and he got up to give a drush, he couldn't remember the Rambam he was going to say. And it humbled him. 
that stuff, and we should we shouldn't need it. So anyway, Baruch Hashem, I can say over the Chassidic Torah, but on my English, I don't know what happened. So, let, I mean, who knows? I might not even be able to say the Chassidic Torah. We'll try our best. Let's see what we can do. There's two concepts that can be expressed, like we say, Kivyochel, as if it were, meaning metaphorically speaking, you know, that there is a concept of God being near and God being far. Imminence and X something. I don't remember the fancy English word, but near and far. We know what that means, but it, but the, the theological words are better because near and far are talking in the sense of physical things, and that's why this is a bushel. This you can't. So that's why the the fancy words are better for this. But self called self. I don't, I'm very embarrassed, I forgot the word, someone is going to write it in the comments below, I know. Anyway, and I thank whoever it is that watched it this long, that they're going to help me. Uh, anyway, Bechinus Rochaik, who, Sha'anu Maminim, Sha'or, Ein Soiv, Baruch Hu, Hu Kadmein L'chol Kadmeinim. So obviously these terms of near and far, Are parables because there's no such thing as near God is Bamali Kalala Vasiva Kalala, right? He fills all worlds, he surrounds all worlds, right? So there's no play in Vile Sasar Panoimine, right? The 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 the, the always says there's no place empty of him. So how could there be Indian of Rochik. How could there be a concept of God being far away? Uh, which the word, I don't remember the word right now. Ex not exalted. It's a better word. Anyway, so conceptually, this idea of near and far doesn't mean like near and far physically. Obviously, that would be heretical. What it means is that when we say that God is far, not again, not far, he's ex something, I don't remember. It means that that which we believe, that the light, the endless light of God, the infinite light, is the ultimate, original, first thing. There's nothing before it. Li racious, it has no beginning. And so this concept of transcendence. Why am I thinking X? So there's eminence and transcendence. I I got it. But someone probably wrote it before I said transcendence. So the concept of God's transcendence is something that is impossible. The ancient Bria It's impossible for any creature, meaning even the highest angel. The greatest Bukubal, the greatest mystic, the greatest angel, the Chayas Akhoidesh, the Srofim, the Ifanim, all the Merkovas, everything. No one can understand the transcendence of God, who is the first, ultimate first cause, the unmoved mover. Because we can we never experienced anything like that other than God, because nothing exists like that other than God. It's impossible. You know, everything we see had something before it. But to imagine something that has nothing before it, that it is before everything, that level of transcendence is impossible to truly comprehend. We can talk about it, but we don't truly comprehend it. <laughs> The reason why the mind cannot grasp this concept of transcendence is because the mind itself is a creation, right? It's something that is new. It's newer than God, right? It's something that God created. But God is before everything. And like I just said, there is no 
wheel or a dragon, these types of angels that are wheels and dragons. This uh, 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 Ophan means the wheel, like Ezekiel, so the wheels. And the seraph is, even though in English they say like seraph, seraph seraphim, but the, it's funny. I have these other religions come up on my YouTube because I have to download them for work. So you see again, <laughs> that that came up. Anyway, seraph means a, a, a burning thing, and it means a, a, a dragon. It's really, Rabbi Bart Sadok explained, it's the Chinese oriental dragons. I'm sorry if I used that with Asian dragons, what I say. That is what Isaiah is really describing, and that is what and, and Rabbi Bart Sadok, I think, is saying it because he, he saw such a thing, you know. Anyway, these angels that are wheels and dragons, all kinds of things, they cannot understand the transcendent nature of God. Because God's transcendence is beyond any understanding. That is the concept of far away. That's the concept of transcendence. And that says that they that they uh, were, uh, uh, prostrated and worship from far away, meaning that they prostrate themselves, they humble themselves to this this unknowable concept of transcendence. Meaning it's far away, meaning that it's totally separate and transcendent from any understanding of Bechinus Karov. But what about this idea of God's closeness? And this idea of God's eminence, of his of his closeness is that God fills all the we believe that God fills all the worlds. It's a nice vision of Sir Niggin. I'll have to sing it later because I want to finish this Torah. Uh, all right, where are we up to? So God fills all the worlds and he's in the midst of all the worlds. Umakif Kalaman, he surrounds all the worlds. Oh, I already, I already quoted from, from the Knezoyer says, there's no place empty of God. Because like Isaiah says, oh, the whole earth is full of his glory. That's the concept that God is close. And we Jews, Jews have to understand and believe in both concepts of transcendence and eminence. The first is transcendence, being far away, and the second is eminence, being close. This is, I believe, is a verse in Isaiah. It says, Peace to those who are far and to who are near, says the Lord. Meaning that the righteous saint who believes that the blessed Lord is both transcendent and eminent, both close and far, far and near. The peace, the blessings come down to the person who has this belief, who has this understanding that God is both near and far, that he's transcendent and eminent. Similarly, there's the concept of loving God and fearing God. This idea of fear or awe or being inspired, that is with something that's very higher than you. That's this concept of Transcendence of being far away, that is where it falls down to having fear, to having awe of for the concept of, of eminence of being close. From there, we receive love, the, the concept of loving God. This is the concept where it says that when they bow down and prostrate themselves and worship the Hubachinus Yira. That's the concept of <coughs> fear, of awe. 
meaning you you bow and worship to something you're in awe of. And that is what is said that is from far away, because it's canal, like we said above. May I say a bechina shall roche kisiga bechina siira? That from this concept of God's transcendence, that's where they were able to to understand this concept of fear of God, and from the concept of fear of God, they bowed in worship because you bowed and and subjugate yourself to something that is higher than you. I think that's the whole term, but let's just see what, what it says here. Because I think there's a any in this one I remember now. Because every time I say Aleinu, I remember this term. The Ariya Kodesh writes, in the Rabbi Isaac Gloria, the great Kabbalist writes, in the uh, intentions and the meditations that one should have when reciting the the hymn that we recite after the, the three prayers every day, Aleinu L'Shabeach, is our duty to give praise, which, according to our tradition, was written by Joshua, and they recited as they fit the Battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down, right? B'Vanach Nukoyrim, right? In that hymn, we say, and we bow. B'Shtach and the in the tradition is when you recite that you you bow. That so the the Ariya Kodesh says that when you bow while you say this word Different than any other bowing, the bowing during the Shrinesra, the the Tfilas Amida, this bowing by Aleinu is different. The because what we're accomplishing when we bow during Aleinu <clears throat> is that we're drawing down tremendous blessings and energy and influence from Ein Soif, from God's ultimate endless light, His His infinite nature, Baruch Hu. From that blessed infinite nature, L'Soichoi Lamais, that which is so transcendent when we bow during Aleinu, we're bringing it into the world. And that's what is written. And as they bowed in worship, that, that meaning that they means that they bowed in worship from this concept of transcendence They that while they bowed down, they were bringing that energy down into the world, and we do that too. Can you imagine what power God gave us three times a day? We bowed down during Aleinu, and we're bringing the Orin Saif Baruch Don't think that's a Kleinakite. Every Yid has such a Gewaldige Koyach. And I know, you know, sometimes, you know, they, they tell a joke that, that, you know, Aleinu, they put it in the middle of the Rosh Hashanah, because and Yom Kippur, because uh, usually we don't make a big deal out of it, you know. You know, in the modern shuls they sing it Shabbos morning, you know. But other than that, it's something people rush through. But the truth is, and I'm guilty of that myself. I'll be honest. But the truth of the matter is, we're drawing down the energy, mamish from Ein Soif. We have to recognize the tremendous value in that and not think it's a small thing. We should embrace that power that God gives us and celebrate it. Banach <laughs> nu
Let's sing that vision to Kvoidoi though. Kvoidoi. Molei, oh boy, lam. Kvoidoi. Hey, molei, ah, hey, lam. Kvoidoi, molei, ah, lam. Kvoidoi. Molei, ah, hey, lam. Kvoidoi. Molei, ah, hey, lam. Kvoi doi Mole Oba boi lam Kvoi doi Mole oi lam It's good when you sing this around and you have all the Mishar sub Shoyalim zelo ze Ay 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 Mikoin Kvoi doi I miss our self, so y'all in Zeloze. Ay, 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 McCoyim, Kivoy, doy. Ay, 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 dum. Ay, 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 dum. Ay, da, 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 dum. I da 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 Mishosavshayavalimzeluze, <laughs> I am a coin, Kivoy doy. Mr. Sumshayalim Zelze. I am a coin, Kivoy doy. I am a coin, Kivoy doy. Leari, Selmosam, but if you're in my re. Daddy, I don't want it. How do you turn this thing off? <laughs> <laughs>